Yo, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, B. Mahari here, representing Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Uh, much love to the entire LDBC and the entire uh, basketball community. Um, tonight, we will have basketball conversations at 9 p.m. Central Time. Um, we're going to discuss a lot of different stuff around the NBA. We're about two weeks away from the start of the 2020-21 season, and a lot of stuff that's going to be happening in the next few weeks, guys. So buckle your chin straps and get ready for a wild season of NBA basketball. You understand what I'm saying? So make sure to tune in to me, tune in to LB, you know, to Raw, Ticket TV, the rest of the crew as we get you ready for, for the start of NBA basketball. But this is a video that I actually wanted to, you know, to talk about. But, you know, I've been, you know, busy with work and all that stuff, but this is the perfect time to do it. And we're going to touch this a little bit more in depth on my show uh, tonight. But the thing I wanted to talk about is about, you know, Scottie Pippen confronting uh, Michael Jordan over his portrayal in the documentary. Uh, the documentary was basically was the uh, ten part series called The Last Dance. Now, originally, it was supposed to be it's been aired after the NBA Finals, but because of the pandemic and things, you know, changed dramatically, it was pushed, you know, forward to like, you know, March or something like that. Yeah, March. But I wanted to personally, you know, talk about how, you know, you know, Scottie Pippen, you know, approaching the Michael Jordan and talking about his portrayal in the documentary which was not really well, you know, received, you know, because Pippen was being labeled as a selfish, you know, person, you know, and was affected and was like a mentally weak type of player, which is obviously not the truth. And, you know, Michael did, you know, did apologize, you know, for what he was saying in a documentary, but, you know, which is, I thought, you know, it was a good idea on his part to do that, you know, because they, because that was his teammate and they won six championships together. So, you know, I think that, you know, it showed, you know, some respect and, and respect in into the fact that, you know, that Michael, you know, should maybe said some things that were a little bit mi misleading or a little bit too far. But, you know, I can commend it for, for, for doing that. But this is about me and how I perceived it. Now, I'm going to break this apart in two different things. OK, I'm not going to go too much in depth because I want to save that for tonight. But I'll but here's why I was to put it like this. I really felt that, you know, the documentary could have done a lot more in terms of, you know, talking about the team as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as the entire whole. What I mean by is that, you know, I felt that the documentary to me was a bit one sided about Michael Jordan, about, you know, his life, about how he gets into basketball, you know, the, the old story that we'd heard millions of times. And trust me, I know it from inside out. You know, it, it was pretty much 90% 90, 90 of it. I already knew most of it. So a lot of it was not surprising to me. But I felt that, you know, the documentary could have done a little bit better job of, you know, getting to know a lot of the players, you know, how Bill Wennington was on the team, how, you know, Randy Brown, you know, was, you know, was a journeyman before he ended up being in, in, in uh, with Chicago. You could have touched upon about Ron Harper about how Harper, you know, had to overcome a starting issue that really much handicapped him, you know, throughout the majority of his life. And then eventually, be, you know, becoming a five-star athlete and, be, and getting into the NBA and then overcoming a negative reputation that he obtained when he was in Cleveland by Wayne Embry, the, gen, the then general manager at the time. You know, perceivably, he was involved in some, some gang activity, which was not true. And ended up being traded to the doormat uh, uh, Los Angeles Clippers before ending up, you know, enduring the knee surgery that really slowed his athletic ability and then eventually had to change his game when he came into Chicago. You could have touched upon about, you know, Tony Kukos, how he grew up in Croatia, you know, surviving, you know, the Yugoslavian, uh, you know, civil wars that really just literally broke the country, you know, completely. And how that great Yugoslavian team with, you know, Vlade with Drazen and with uh, those guys, they were a really great international team, but the war just like broke them apart entirely. So I felt that they could have, you know, touched upon that. I really liked, you know, the story about Steve Kerr, about his father. I, it was very tragic how he was killed by just, you know, trying to teach people, you know, education, giving them an opportunity. So I really liked that. But I felt that there was a lot, there was, could have been a lot more to the document that they could have went through. They could have talked about, you know, Scotty Pippen's 94 year, how he won all-star MVP and how he should have won, you know, the overall MVP, even though they gave it to Akeem Olajuwon. So I, I really felt that there was a lot of things that would have missed, 
you know, that game five of that 94 conference uh, semifinals against the Knicks on that bogus call by Hugh Hollins. That was not mentioned. You could have talked about, you know, a little bit more about, you know, Scotty Pippen, you know, whispered to the whale man saying that the mailman don't deliver on Sunday in game one of the 97 finals when he missed both of those free throws, which led to the Jordan game winner in that series. There was so much more that they could have, you know, touched upon, but I felt that there was so much that they, they had to condense a lot of things and they just, there was a lot of things that were left out. But that's what I felt on that particular end. Now, the big part about Pippen's portrayal in the documentary. Now, listen, I do agree that, you know, his his, his uh, portrayal was not really good. But let's be real about something here, okay? There were a lot of things about Pippen that were indeed true. Yeah, the migraine thing was maybe a little bit overblown. You know, maybe it really, you know, affected his reputation for a while. But let's but let's be real about something here. Was it was it Michael Jordan that made him sign that seven year, eighteen million dollar deal in nineteen ninety one? Was it Michael Jordan that made you upset that Phil Jackson wrote a play for Tony Kukoc for the game winning shot against the Knicks in the playoffs, and you decided to sit on the bench? You know, being a selfish prick. Was did Michael Jordan make you made you sit out half of the ninety seven ninety eight season when he could have just taken the surgery early for your you know ruptured tendon in his in your ankle? No, let's break down something here. Even though even though his portrayal was negative, it was actually the, the actual truth. Pippen was a selfish person. There's no denying that. And a lot of it was actually it was, it's, it's the honest truth. Pippen was, you know, was being selfish. And yes, he was underpaid, but nobody put a gun to your head and made you sign that contract. You signed that contract on your own admission. And I'm sorry. All right. If you would have played your cards right, except maybe a one year deal worth $18 million and then testing yourself in the free agency markets when the salary cracks exploded, you could have made a lot more money. But you chose not to do that because you were more worried about your family and making sure that they were taken care of, which is the very commendable thing to do. But what you did in the process was you took yourself at the opportunity to make it a lot more money. All right. Now, sure, Krause and Reinstor could have renegotiated your deal and could have given you a lot more money. I totally agree with that. But you knew that both of those guys were not going to were not going to, you know, renegotiate your deal. When you sign the deal, you honor it. All right. So I I cannot just sit here and say that it was that Michael was not wrong because he was actually telling the truth. And you could have taken the surgery, okay? You could have you could have fixed that ruptured tendon in your ankle that you entered in the 97 playoffs against Miami. Right, you could have gotten yourself in shape, ready to go for the ninety-seven, ninety-eight season instead of using the season to get into shape and then sitting out half of the year. Like that, really, to me, showed a lot more selfish, you know, more of the selfish nature that Scottie Pippen has, right? And how are you going to sit there and say that you were angered by your portrayal when a lot of that stuff was actually truth and reported, and you even admitted that to yourself? So I, I really don't understand where is, I really don't understand why he would even feel this way because a lot of it he did this to himself. So I, I cannot sit here and say that Michael was lying because if you're a knowledgeable basketball fan like myself, you knew that a lot of the stuff was was the honest truth. It legitimately was. And at the end of the day, the point is this: Pippen can get mad at Jordan all he wants to. You know, and Jordan can give him all this sorts of fake apologies that he wants or the genuine apologies. But we know for a fact Pippen was was being selfish. Everybody knows that. All right. So yes, he's still a top 50 great, great player. All right. Nobody can take away what he was able to do during his time in Chicago. He was one of the greatest two, two way players in NBA history. Without a doubt in my mind, top 50 greatest player. Some people may have him top 30. I do. You know what I'm saying? What he was able to do on the defensive side of the ball is phenomenal. One of the great athletes of the 90s, right? And a game, and his game could translate even well in today's basketball. But listen, there's we cannot sit here and try to deflect the fact that Pippen was being selfish during that time. Now, yeah, he had back surgery, you know, up and you know, during the early 90s that really, you know, slowed him down a bit, right? His back was just messed up during that time. Okay. And sure, he was, you know, playing, playing injured, but you can't question the man's toughness, all right? 
he you know battled through injuries he battled through the stigma of that migraine incident in the in 1990 and became one of the great players in the game but when you talk about his money and talking about the contract situation it's dead on accurate he was being selfish he thought about himself then about the team all right and i can't sit here and say that say that you know i feel sorry for him because i don't he signed the contract he, he's made he put himself in a very you know bad position of making a lot less money and had to wait until 98 to get his guaranteed money with the rackets but by that time he was already a worn down player and so what does that even mean so i to me you know michael should have never should have just stood on his square i felt and should have just said hey you were being that person bro you can't deny that but you know it is what it is you know with that but you know that's just how i feel about this whole situation I'm sure that their relationship has kind of changed now, you know, after this documentary was released. But we're going to discuss that a little bit more in depth about some of the things that, you know, you know, Pippen should have taken accountability for and this, that, and the third. But that's just a little bit of my two cents. You let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and we'll see you later on tonight. Peace.